Hey y'all, I hope you're doing well. Sorry if you've been following me. I haven't been recording much because then I went on vacation um, after we had the Strawberry Festival. So back at it, there's only 28, I believe, chapters in Acts. Yes, and this is chapter 23. In chapter 23, we're gonna hear about hypocrisy, praying and fasting over the right thing. We learn about some of Paul's family and no matter your age, God can use you. So let's get into God's word in Acts 23. And I have already read my chapters and taken my notes. And so I'm ready to end Acts with you. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey with a lot of re great repetitiveness about um, repentance and turning to God. And that's what we need to make sure we do. So here we go. Chapter 23. Gazing intently at the high council, Paul began, Brothers, I've always lived before you with a clear conscience. And then stop it right there. I read those two words. I'm thinking clear conscience. Can I, can I say the same about my daily living? Have I been living with a clear conscience, a godly clear conscience? Um, hopefully you know that if you're Christian, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, and that God conscience, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you um, things that are good and that are bad, and, and hopefully you've listened and you can live with a clear conscience. I know I experienced something on vacation, and I needed to clear my conscience, and I went and, and I asked for forgiveness for something, and, and all was fine. But my conscience was clear then, and it's something I needed to do, and it's something we all should do. Verse 2, instantly Ananias the high priest commanded those close to Paul to slap him on the mouth. But Paul said to him, um, God will slap you, you corrupt hypocrite. What kind of judge are you to break the law yourself by ordering me struck like that? Those standing near Paul said to him, do you dare insult God's high priest? Well, I'm sorry, brothers. I didn't realize he was a high priest, Paul replied. For the scriptures say you must not speak evil about any of your rulers. Paul realized that some members of the high council were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. So he shouted, brothers, I am a Pharisee, as were my ancestors. And I am on trial because of my hope is in the resurrection of the dead. This divided the council, the Pharisees against the Sadducees. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits. But the Pharisees, they believe in all of these. So there was a great uproar. Some of the teachers of religious law who were Pharisees jumped up and began to argue forcefully. We see nothing wrong with him, they shouted. Perhaps a spirit or an angel spoke to him. As the conflict grew more violent, the commander was afraid that they would tear Paul apart. So he ordered his soldiers to go and rescue him by force and take him back to the fortress. That night, the Lord appeared to Paul and said, Be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must go preach the good news as to Rome as well. And y'all get ready because the chapters that follow is this conflict between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it was no accident. Him going to Rome and not Jerusalem, it is by God's design. God has an appointment. We don't always know things, but you know what? It seems that Paul just kind of went with the flow because he knew he was listening and he was right with God. Whenever I read verse 2 about being slapped by God, um, I, I, it cracked me up, but it also put me in my place as well. And I said that I am not a fan of hypocrisy, not a fan at all. So I asked the Lord to reveal to me any hypocrisy in my own life because I don't want to be slapped by God. I don't want that to happen. So maybe you need to do the same thing now, especially over this Easter weekend. If you feel that there, 
for, forget just feel. You need to ask God to reveal if there's any hypocrisy in you, if there's anything in you that needs to be made right with him, that you need to repent. Is there any unforgiveness in your heart? Whatever the case may be, ask God to do that. You know what? He will. He will. So get ready. And do that over this Easter weekend especially. Make sure that you are in line and focused on Jesus Christ and what this whole wonderful um, holiday is all about. All right. Verse 12. The next morning, a group of Jews got together and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 of them in the conspiracy they went to the leading priest and elders and told them, we have bound ourselves with an oath, oath to eat nothing until we have killed Paul. So you and the high council should ask the commander to bring back Paul to the council again. Pretend you want to examine his case more fully. We'll kill him on the way. So, I can find things to not eat or drink over, but killing someone is not part of it. I don't believe that's the right way to fast and to pray. So, and plus they had, they were conspiracy. They were very devious. So you want to make sure that you save your fasting for righteousness. Save it for what God wants you to do. Not for evil and not for devious and conspiracy and wanting to kill someone. That's, that's not on um, the right way that we need to be doing things. All right. Verse 16. But Paul's nephew, his sister's son. Okay, so right there, we find out finally something about Paul's family. Now we know he had a sister, and we know that he had a nephew. We don't know the age, but coming up in these following um, verses, you get the sense that he was a young boy by the actions that the, um, the ruler took. Here we go. All right. They heard their plan and went to the fortress to and, and told Paul. Paul called for one of the Roman officers and said, take this young man to the commander. He has something important to tell him. So the officer did, explaining, Paul, the prisoner, called me over and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. So then the commander in verse 19, he took his hand. And I can imagine you're not going to do this to a teenager or a young adult. You do this to a child. So I'm thinking he's younger. So you've got this young person and he's taken by the hand um, by the commander and it doesn't matter the age or the stage. I've said that so many times. God can use you. God is calling you. So always be aware and listening. The commander in verse 19 took his hand, led him aside and asked, what is it you want to tell me? Paul's nephew told him, some Jews are going to ask you to bring Paul before the high council tomorrow, pretending they want to get some more information. But, don't do it. There are more than 40 men hiding along the way to ambush him. They have vowed not to eat or drink or and do anything until they've killed him. They are ready now, just waiting for your consent. Don't let them know. You told me this, the commander warned the young man. Verse 23. Then Paul I mean, then the commander called two of his officers and ordered, get 200 soldiers ready and leave for Caesarea at nine o'clock tonight. Also take 200 spearmen and 70 mounted troops. Provide horses for Paul to ride and get him safely to Governor Felix. Then he wrote, <laughs> excuse me, he wrote this letter to the governor. From Claudius Lysias to the Excellency Governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by some Jews, and they were about to kill him when I arrived with the troops. When I heard that he was a Roman citizen, 
I removed him to safety. Then I took him to hear high counsel to try to learn the basis of the accusations against him. I soon discovered the charge was something regarding the religious law, certainly nothing worthy of imprisonment or death. But when I was informed of a plot to kill him, I immediately sent him on to you. I have told the accusers to bring their charges before you. So now he's moving on and to, to what we hear at the beginning of the chapter about when Jesus said, be encouraged and you're going to preach the good news is rain. We're on our way there. Verse 31, almost done. So that night as ordered, the soldiers took Paul as far as Antipatris. They returned to the fortress the next morning. While the mounted troops took him on to Caesarea, when they arrived in Caesarea, they presented Paul in the letter to Governor Felix. He, had, he read it, and then he asked Paul what province he was from. Cilicia, Paul answered. I will hear your case myself when your accusers arrive, the governor told him. Then the governor ordered him in, to be kept in prison at Herod's headquarters. So that's chapter 23. That's just getting your mouth watering for what's getting ready to be coming up. I told you I've read ahead. I know what's happening. And you got to keep following along because it's good stuff. Have a wonderful day. Remember to don't be a hypocrite and ask God to um, reveal anything in you that needs to be revealed and made right with him. Make sure that you know that when you fast, you fast for what's right with God and righteousness. And remember that God will use you at any age. There's divine appointments all on your life. Just make sure you're listening. Listen to God. All right. You have a great day, and I'm getting ready to be back with Acts 24. Take care.